he ought to go and join the Royal Marine. He's probably trained you to do something big and butch like climb on a supermarket trolley. Don't you agree, Smitty? I do. And it's very good to see the Asda people showing us the safe way to do the supermarket trolley. <laughs> Now, we wanted to show you Andy Middlehurst, our whirly wheeler, training this week. He's been doing some very hard training. It's been a difficult week to find BBC reporters with all the news that's been around this week, but we did manage to find one particular crack pot. Um, <laughs> bright, sharp, clear. Not the reporter, the weather. This is Woodbury Common, just to the south of here. <laughs> a few miles away to the west is the Royal Marine Commando Training Centre. And even though, on a reasonably sunny morning, it looks pretty pleasant here, I can assure you, conditions can be extremely arduous. And this week, our whirly-wheeler is really going to be put to the test. There's something slightly intoxicating about the masculine environment here, and for once, I think I'm going to really get stuck in. Right, this is the endurance course. Your first obstacle's a tunnel. Stand by. Go! <laughs> Marines, will you? <laughs> Come on, in, fellas, let's go. Get out of there. Get down to the next one. Please pull the next obstacle. Let's go. We go first one. Come on, these things. Come on, in, let's go. Go. This tea is cold. <laughs> down, Jack. <laughs> Come here, myself. Stand by. One, two, three, go. Oh, good. <laughs> right, that's just part of the course finished. Quick four more run back to camp, then we're back indoors. Let's go. Good shot. Nice formation. <laughs> Very good. Where is he? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Want to go for a second lap, do we? <laughs> <laughs> coming across, you're trying to strangle me, OK, and you're pulling across like that. First thing I want to do is get rid of that so I can breathe. I'll reach up around. As you've seen, we've given Andy a pretty tough day, and he's come out of it remarkably well. I, I must admit, I've been a bit unfair to him, so we thought that we would give him something reasonably easy to finish off with. By commando standards, this is a real doddle. Forward, uh, don't your left leg or us gonna roll underneath. So keep your foot... <laughs> We're back live here at Minston at the Royal Marine Commando Training Centre. I mean, as, as the commercial says, you know, apart from kicking you in the painful places, what else does the BBC do for you in a week? <laughs> what else does it do? 16p a day for the licence fee is marvellous value, isn't it? All this training you've got. Yeah, brilliant. 16p a day, it's got to be worth it. Going to become a Marine after all this? Well, I think it's going to be a bit too hard work for me, really. I think I'd rather... of television and film, Mr. Noel Edmonds, in association with the British Broadcasting Corporation, is proud to present the wonderful Golden Egg Awards.
been told by Ian, our floor manager, to point out that we're terribly sorry, but we have lost our lines to Devon. <laughs> <laughs> Dummy, that was obvious. We'd lost the line. Oh, well, it's... <laughs> However, there is a benefit. It does prove this part isn't pre-recorded, because otherwise I wouldn't have known about that. Welcome to the Extreme Intellectual <laughs> Exertions of our grand old academy. We have unearthed for your eggification a choice of smashing yolks. All right. On to our first award. Now, do you have a problem with a little pink thing that you find very difficult to control? <laughs> do you have one of those bits of the anatomy that seems to run off and be totally... <laughs> I had a tongue. We're coming around for the tongue award this week. You know, right? <laughs> Do you have problems wrapping your tongue around the odd words, such as the actress in this soap opera who has a lot of trouble with the word infinitesimal? Infinitesimal. Infinitesimal. The odds of that ever happening again are infinitesimal. <laughs> was an extreme case. She was desperate for money, and she is not representative of the other kids at the crisis center, and the odds of that ever happening again are absolutely infinitesimal. <laughs> Pamela was an extreme case. She was not representative of the other kids at the crisis center, and she was desperate for money, and the odds of that thing ever happening again are absolutely slim. <laughs> Got a real gem for you now. This is a little bit of history. We've delved into the cobweb festooned archives of the Golden Academy to pull out this very early example of a commercial. And here is the successful finished advertisement. <laughs> but why won't they eat? Look at all this food. George, I can't get them to eat. Just you wait. Folks don't feel it's a meal without Lipton iced tea. <laughs> <laughs> However, the first recording of that was not quite such a runaway success. Well, actually, now come to think of it, it really was a considerable runaway success. <laughs> they can't eat without me. But why won't they eat? Look at all this food. George! I think, I think you'd say that was a picnic hampered by a crash diet. <laughs> anyway, without more ado, no further beating about the bush, no delay. <laughs> no hesitation whatsoever. We move on to the much-coveted Giggling Award. <laughs> this goes to a man with an ever-ready smile, a Duracell giggle, the chap with a funny bone in his brain. How are you feeling? <laughs> to receive his award, ladies and gentlemen, Lenny Henry. Very serious award ceremony, if you This is that. a very serious suit now, you know what I mean? <laughs> Let's get serious. I love those old pictures of you. They look the same, the hair's the same, but everything. <laughs> it's true. The hair. Look at this, living proof that Grecian 2000 doesn't work. It's brilliant. <laughs> Sorry, keep broadcasting, Noel. Nothing else can go wrong, can it? <laughs> what else can go wrong on live TV? Oh, go on. Can I, can I do it now? Go on, Noel. Brilliant showman. Roots. <laughs> <laughs> Can Anything we, else? Anything? Can, we, can I go now? Is this mine? No, we've got some more now. We've got some more giggles oh, from no. you. Yeah, we've got <laughs> some more of them. Kiswari nan writer jaldi. Listen, I left a tip at the restaurant. What are you doing? Hounding me for more? I'm the district police officer. Why are you waking? Why are you waking as a waiter? <laughs> <laughs> Jake, Claudia, look. 
looks to me like you can eat anything you want and not gain weight. Mmm. Actually, the more I eat, the thinner I get. What? It's true. And if I don't eat, it's true. <laughs> By the way, despite the fact you've been very rude to me this evening, I'd like to wish you all the best of luck with your new record. It's like a new record? Yeah, we've, we found this sleeve. Let's have a look at the sleeve. There you are, look. You're, <laughs> you're in a band called Ladies Choice. That is yeah, you, well, uh, I hope the ladies go out and buy it. It's going to be a big hit. Here's your egg. Thanks for joining Thank us. Thank you very Many much. Hands. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Coming up next on the Late Late Breakfast Show, here's Survivor! see me because I can barely see the camera then. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> Survivor from Rocky Four, of course. Now, we are looking for the biggest mouth in Britain. 
This is, this is not my favourite challenge, because immediately people go back and say, look in the mirror. Uh, we all have nominations. I could come up with a name or two. But what about this fella? Mel Switzer. He comes from Totten, and he came to prominence in 1984 when he won the title of the biggest snore in Britain. Since then, in 1985, he went on to get the world championship in snoring. And he's obviously in line for our title. <coughs> Sorry, the smoke's got me. Unfortunately... <laughs> He seems to do most of his practicing while I'm on the telly. Mel has appeared on BBC's Body Matters and Japanese televi television. He even registers his snores on a snoreometer. It reached 87.5 decibels and he's in the Guinness Book of Records for his biggest snore. <laughs> and we've had a nomination for Len Machin. He's been volunteered by all the regulars down at his pub, the Imperial, in Hastings. It seems that he's got an absolutely foolproof way of chucking them out at closing time. If you want to know what his patter's like, I hope he is here, live on the phone, Len Machin. through the studio door from Hastings. Is, is, that, sure? is that the pattern that you normally use then, Len? Sorry? Is that, is, that's the style of the thing normally, is it? Oh, no, actually, I, do, I, I, I can uh, come out with uh, one or two more phrases that... Uh... Yes, I've no doubt. It's live telly. I'd rather you didn't, actually. <laughs> no, 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 not actually. I mean, uh, it's quite polite. Is it? Yes, I have to do it because it's such a busy little pub, you see, that they have a job hearing me. <laughs> well, we all heard you here, Len, and yeah. you'll be pleased to know you're going through into our finals. So I hope to actually be able to meet you in person. <laughs> Good night! <laughs> Goodbye! <laughs> <clears throat> if you feel you know somebody with a big mouth who really could be the holder of the title of the biggest mouth in Britain, is the address. We'd like you to write to the Late Late Breakfast Show, BBC Television Centre, London W12, 8QT. Walk and talk at the same time. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we come to that most prestigious of sporting moments. With the grace, the ceremony and the pomp of, indeed, royal occasions. Embodied in the favourite of all sports enthusiasts. Millions are gathered around the television at this particular moment, waiting for this grand occasion to occur. It's our y front challenge. Could we please have our first contestant? It is the gentleman I pulled out of the audience earlier. My name's Patrick Dunn, I'm a taxi driver from Loughton. I think I'll be a fair wife and challenger, because I've been picking up a few tips. Good taxi driver, fair check. I love it, love it. Do step over there, Patrick. <laughs> Next contestant, please. Here he is. <laughs> You look like a traffic light, Spencer. <laughs> You've got amber, red and green. Anyway, do your bit. Hello, I'm Spencer Cleffrell from Sheffield. I've always wanted a brief appearance on TV. <laughs> there you go. There you go. There's a translation on CFAX page. <laughs> get off! Get off! Get off! Don't let me on Peggy's underpants here. I'm going to use these. Get off! Get, get off, please! Just chatting. This is a, a, a serious challenge. Our next contestant. Hello, I'm, I'm Sarah Greenwood. I'm a secretary from Barnolswick in Lancashire. I like riding horses quite a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm used to slipping on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> Did anybody understand that? <laughs> and the next one is. Hello, I'm David Bowman from Windsor. Um, I'm a bit of an entrepreneur, but I haven't decided which bit yet. <laughs> I used to play rugby for Harlequins, but this is a whole new ball game. <laughs> for relaxation, I stuff birds. <laughs> Good evening, 
name, sir? My name is Melanie Foster. I'm from Kidderminster and I work in a sauna. I've been given these knickers, but I wanted to use my own because I have such a lovely pair. <laughs> I'm not saying a word. I'm saying nothing. Our final contestant, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure you'll recognise him, Mr Neil Adams. Good evening. Yeah. <laughs> what, is a, what is a reputable sportsman doing here? I'm Neil Adams from London. <laughs> Come on. Lovely pair I'm a martial that. artist. I've been European champion, world champion, and I'm double Olympic silver medalist. <laughs> I'm used to being gripped in tight places, and you've been waiting for me to say that. <laughs> and you're prepared to lower well, your yeah. standards for anything, Neil. Right. Well, it's jumping out of the Y fronts, or possibly the bikini top, actually. <laughs> <laughs> One minute, and we have got. Over 30 to beat. We're looking for over 30 from our contestants in this eight. <laughs> well, what a great wife and final this is here at the Casting House. Never before have so many buttocks been trembling in. <laughs> on tops of their thighs. Neil Adams having a terrible time there. At least he knows how to fall. And my goodness, look at this man. He's ripping pants all over the place. Must have been the beans. Good group. This is live television. Never before has so much been done by so much and, and been so wobbled by so little. This is what they want. This is all they're getting. Live television here at Broadcasting House. This could be a first, a second, even a pair. <laughs> Tell me, Murray, how does this compare with the Grand Prix? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> what are you asking me for? Oh, you seem to be a bit of an expert in these bags. Yeah. This is a Like to thank uh, this is what they want. Murray Henry Walker for the commentary over there. Hello, Mum. Patrick Dunn <laughs> managed 21. Well done, Patrick. Patrick is the winner <laughs> in our final 21. Well done. Come with me. You stay there. <laughs> I bet you could do with one. If you'd like to go over to the telephone over there. No, we were just having a chat on the way over. It's all right. Here we have a whole load of names. There are ten names. Only one person can join us. So I'm going to give it a whirl. Patrick, if you'd like to have a look and see which name comes up at the top, then we'll dial up that person. Or you can. Uh, quite clearly, you can see you're, you're going to be doing something with a lady next week. And it's not going to be Zandra Stokes. Sorry, Zandra. Mandy Thomas. Oh, Mandy, just missed you. Rebecca Noon in New Quay. Rebecca Noon. You found it yet? No. Up the top, one at the very top there. OK. Uh, Rebecca Noon is 18 years old. She lives in New Quay. She's a secretarial student, likes horse riding and swimming. Would like to have a go at ice skating. Give me the nod when you hear a click in the phone, and then I can divert it so that we can all hear it here in the studio. Uh, 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 anything happening? <laughs> I hope you've dialed this right. <laughs> anything? It's ringing. It's ringing, is it? Right, OK. Hello. Hello, Rebecca. Hello. Hello, Re Rebecca? <laughs> Hello? Oh, no, give it here for Hello? Goodness. Hello? 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 Hello, Rebecca, can you hear me? Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, I can, just a bit. Yeah, well, we can hear you, and no doubt you can hear me off your television, can you? No? Hello? H Hello? <laughs> Give it here. <laughs> Hello. All right, you talk, you talk to her. See if you can get through. Hello, I'll uh, just point out we have Blue Thunder, right, we've got yeah, a Lucky Dip and whatever, and if Rebecca can see her television set, one of these is going to be her challenge for next week. It could even be Hover Bobber, but I doubt whether it'll stop at Hover Bobber. Although, you never know. Oh, yes, it has stopped it. <laughs> this is there. Oh, one last try. Are you there? Yeah, yeah. You are. Jolly good. Have a look at your television set, because you are going to have a little bother with a hover next week. It really is a very exciting challenge we've got lined up for you. And the man there, you see, is your instructor, who will teach you how to control expertly one of these craft. <laughs> <laughs> well, we hope he'll train you by the end of it. Rebecca, see you on next week's show. Yeah, thank you. Bye. All right, bye-bye, bye-bye. But it's Marines now, you know? We have all these Marines and things. Have we got the sound back, Smitty? Yeah, I'm, s I'm sorry about all that. It was one of the defence cuts. Now, <laughs> we've got to get back into the first. 
at the Royal Marines Commando Training Centre. We lost Joanne Smith at the start of the programme. We found out where she is. She was captured. She's been kidnapped. Ooh, ah! There she is being dragged into a hut. Andy's going to have to rescue her. They start this all off with an explosion from somewhere I know not where. So let's go and get this going, please! Ah! They're off! Here they come! By my right ear. Andy is the one with the orange shirt on just to the edge of the camera. With him, he's got his trainer. Oh, Cracky, that was a hell of a curry last night. He's got his trainer with him. Merv is there. He's got Dave with him with a moustache on the other side. And Ging is there, but Andy's doing well. He's through that one through the water and the gravel. Off now to the bars. Now, these bars, not only ice water at the bottom of them, but there's also Vaseline on them. They're hard to grip. He's freezing cold and wet. And we're off towards the next one. The one. This is the zigzag six-foot wall. You can see enormous brick wall, slippery boots. He goes along the wall, it zigzags around. Jumps off the end. How are you doing, Andy? You're all right, you're looking good. You're soaking wet and cold. Up here, the challenge is not so much will he get to Anne's Smith, it's will we get this done before the end of tonight's show. <laughs> Along the rope. It is absolutely freezing here at the moment. There's coming off that rope there. Much of the heat of some of these explosions is getting rid of the ice. And down here, towards the last obstacle. I'm completely gone and I'm on the assault course. Come on, Andy, we've got about a minute left to do this. Got to rescue her. Let's go! Through the puddle, come on! Off we go! Smitty, Smitty, take the hurry up! Bridge. Off he goes over the bridge! Now he's got cover from the other Marines! That's hot! In goes the stun group! Off the door! Now watch out! There's the two guys who did that there! Pretty impressive, <laughs> and you did remarkably well, Andy, because you've only got about 30 seconds to go on the show. Well done. Is she all right? I think we're all okay. Are we all in one piece here. Just about. That Absolutely was terrific. Brilliant. Nothing Smitty, like thank all the Royal Marines. Nothing like finishing the show with a big bag, Noel. Quite right. <laughs> and I've been asked to point out we're adhering nicely to the guidelines on violence on television. We're doing very well. All this Smitty, thank just... you. Good night. We're out with a bang, as he says. Good night. <laughs> to rally cars, and he's quickly made his mark in a highly competitive field. But he'd be the first to admit that without financial backing, his talents might count for very little indeed. Modern rallying is an expensive business, and so Andy had to persuade Northwest Industry that his skills were worthy of investment.
Don't be fooled by the patriotic colours. The car's Japanese. But Andrew Middlehurst impressed the manufacturers so much that their normally very sparing works help was made of...